so the important uh, theories the important theories that we are dealing in the coordination compound formation <clears throat> see some of the theories already dealt in the 11th standard topics in the chapter chemical bonding as you can see number one vb theory vb theory we are learning in the chapter chemical bonding but we are discussing in the chapter in detail regarding complex compound formation there is a new one crystal field theory crystal field theory there is the theory ligand field theory we don't discuss in the chapter molecular orbital theory that also we have discussed in the chapter chemical bonding so two theories already dealt in the chapter chemical bonding vb theory and mo theory and exclusively dealt in the chapter crystal field theory and ligand field theory we are not discussing in the concerned topic okay so let's see one by one first of all vb theory how vb theory explain the formation of molecules let us see <clears throat> see according to the vb theory the different kind of complex molecules say if you take a ml4 type ml4 type means coordination number equal to 4 there can be two types one is tetrahedral and one is square planar tetrahedral and square planar tetrahedral will go like this m l 4 like this and that is maintaining sp3 hybridization while square planar all of you know it's it's like this square planar and that is dsp2 hybridization so coordination number four there are two cases all of us know one is tetrahedral complex and the other is square planar complex tetrahedral complex is sp3 hybridized right of course many of you know regarding some of the transition metal complex compounds it may be uh, ds3 type hybridization like that that's a different case here it is sp3 hybridization normally normally tetrahedral all of us know sp3 hybridization square planar it is dsp2 hybridization okay the two cases coming to octahedral complex ml6 type ml6 type coordination number 6 which is only one case octahedral geometry unlike the previous one tetrahedral square planar octahedral geometry but there can be two types of hybridization one hybridization is sp3 d2 hybridization and the other is <coughs> d2 sp3 hybridization sp3 d2 hybridization and d2 sp3 hybridization one involving the outer 4d orbital and the one involving the inner 3d orbital this is called the outer d orbital complex and this is inner d orbital complex there can be two types of octahedral system and ml5 type normally it forms trigonal bipyramidal trigonal bipyramidal and the normal geometry will be sp3 d hybridization so most commonly it is ml4 type ml6 type that we deal in the chapter tetrahedral square planar octahedral systems right if we investigate a few examples <coughs> say we are we are comparing co nh3 6 times 3 plus complex say for example one of the very popular commonly delta complex molecule hexaamine cobalt 3 complex which is normally found to be diamagnetic system it is diamagnetic system how this is explaining the complex formation with reference to vb theory let us examine cobalt all of you know atomic number 27 falling next to iron it is 3d7 and 4s2 that is the configuration 
and here we are talking about cobalt 3 plus this is neutral cobalt 3 plus and that will be 3d6 4s0 2 electron from here and 1 electron from here is removed you get 3d6 4s0 how comes 3d6 this is 3d6 and 4s0 right <clears throat> see the experimental evidences we have this is a diamagnetic complex in a diamagnetic complex i don't have to tell you all the electrons will be uh, paired all the electrons will be paired so what can be the scenario there are four p orbital freely available it is vacant available right you know what will happen this electron is forced to pair here and this electron is forced to pair here and the 3d system turn this is already paired this is pairing over here this is pairing over here and the two d orbitals are made free and it will undergo d2 s p3 hybridization it undergo such a hybridization d2 sp3 hybridization and now it is very well satisfying the experimental evidences of the magnetic behavior it's said to be diamagnetic and we can see it is like that all the electrons are paired and we are getting d2 sp3 hybridization and uh, d2 sp3 will give you six hybrid orbitals six hybrid orbitals so these these three orbitals paired electron system and one two three four five six hybrid orbitals and that is d2 sp3 hybrid orbitals now the ammonia comes and binding you can see each cobalt when bind with the ammonia a lone pair of electron is accepted so a pair of electron from ammonia binding over here like that six ammonia binding over the hybrid orbitals so all the electrons seem to be paired and it is diamagnetic in nature now we call this system as low spin complex why it is called a low spin complex low spin complex because the electrons are getting paired up and the unpaired electrons are made minimum and hence it is diamagnetic in nature low spin complex it is diamagnetic in nature and this is called the inner orbital complex the hybrid orbitals involved are 3d orbital inner orbital so it will be called a d2 sp3 hybrid orbital may be called as inner orbital complex inner orbital complex it is called a low spin complex or called a spin paired complex spin paired complex it is spin paired complex low spin complex diamagnetic system uh, d2 sp3 hybridization of course it is octahedral octahedral inner orbital complex inner orbital complex and these are the categorization that we get a characterization that we get uh, regarding the complex hexa amine cobalt 3 complex and this justification done by bb theory it is able to explain what kind of hybridization is it inner d orbitals involved or outer d orbitals involved we are able to comment is it a low spin complex or high spin complex spin paired complex or spin free complex like that this is about uh, co nh3 six times three plus and various uh, characterization that we conclude regarding the complex imagine at the same time if we are dealing with the uh, co6 f6 if you are dealing with the co f6 3 minus we have experimental evidences this is a paramagnetic system and the approximate magnetic moment found to be in the range of 4.8 4.9 
that is the magnetic moment we get right the experimental evidence proves that this is having some what 4.9 bohr magneton that means there are four unpaired electrons and accordingly the system will be framed or explained by vb theory let us see how once again it is cobalt with atomic number 27 3d7 4s2 system and here also cobalt is 3 plus that is 3d6 4s0 3d6 we have already discussed this is 3d6 system and 4s is vacant but now here <coughs> You need to retain those four unpaired electrons as such because according to the experimental <coughs> evidences regarding the characteristics of the molecule, it is paramagnetic, go having magnetic moment approximately 4.9 means the spin only magnetic moment equal to that of four unpaired electrons. So we have to retain these four unpaired electrons as such. So we have to retain these four unpaired electrons as such. So what we conclude is this s orbital which is free, this s orbital which is free and the free p orbital, three free pre p orbitals, four p orbitals and we take the service of four d orbitals. See there is, there is vacant d orbitals available. And that is the speciality of transition metals. They have free vacant d orbitals. Right. Now we have choice of going the hybridization to be 1 s orbital, 3 p orbital and 2 d orbital which will frame out to be s p 3 d 2 hybridization which maintain this 4 electron unpaired as such. So this will go for sp3 d2 hybridization and there are 6 orbitals formed. Now each fluorine comes with a pair of electron. Cobalt when bind with the fluorine, each fluorine donate a pair of electron and makes a bonding. Fluorine number 1, fluorine number 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Meanwhile here we have four electrons which are unpaired and that makes the system paramagnetic in nature paramagnetic in nature and the system is high spin complex what is meant by high spin complex there is a greater number of unpaired electrons available giving a high degree of paramagnetic character it is called a high spin complex or it is referred as spin free complex spin free complex it is it is sp3 d2 hybridization and we call it as outer orbital complex why it is called a outer orbital complex outer orbital complex the d orbitals involved in hybridization it is 4d orbital earlier it was 3d orbital earlier it was inner d orbital involved in hybridization now it is outer d orbital involved in hybridization so the previous one is in inner orbital complex this is outer orbital complex previous one is low spin complex this is high spin complex that is spin paired complex this is spin free complex that is dia, this is paramagnetic. Okay. Both are octahedral system. Both are octahedral system. So, this kind of characterization and comparison in identical molecules we have been able to make with the reference to VB theory, balance bond theory. And balance bond theory, as all of you know, it is concerned with the way valence orbitals are interacting in the overlapping and the way valence orbitals are undergoing hybridization to give identical bonding characteristics that we explain actually in detail in the chapter 
four chemical bonding of 11th standard topic and that is incorporated here in the chapter explaining the characteristics of various complex molecules you need to practice at least of course we do make our students to practice at least some 20 25 examples of various complex molecules to expertise doing characteristics of um, various complex molecules their magnetic behavior their spinning character their hybridization their geometry etc right this we need to go through in detail regarding bb theory in the complex molecules right of course ncrt is carrying with several examples ncrt is carrying with several examples try to practice as many examples as possible suppose if you are dealing with uh, nicn four times nicn four times which is a square planar complex nicn four times which is a square planar complex say so just for example <coughs> nicn four times 2 minus 2 minus that means we are considering nickel <coughs> we are considering nickel atomic number 28 it is 3d8 4s2 3d8 4s2 and we are talking about nickel cyanide is minus 1 minus 4 2 minus means this is 2 plus nickel 2 plus that is 3d8 4s0 how comes 3d8 3d8 means 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 there are two unpaired electrons there are two unpaired electrons and that is the d orbital s orbital is free and there is p orbital also available free so either we can talk about this is ML4 type system. This is ML4 type system. We can talk about sp3 hybridization or dsp2 hybridization. We can talk about either of the two. But we have in front of us this is a square planar complex. How come this is a square planar complex? It can only be dsp2 hybridization. Right? And of course, it is a diamagnetic system. So, either you, sh you should know it is a diamagnetic system or you must know it is a square planar complex which is experimentally available. We can conclude it is a diamagnetic system. So, this electron will be paired over here and this one d orbital is made free. This is already paired. This is already paired. This is already paired and now this made pairing and this orbital is made free now you can take up this one d orbital d s p2 hybridization d s p2 hybridization will make the molecule square planar so either with the knowledge of our in our knowledge of uh, having a, about the molecule it is square planar or an experimental knowledge that it is diamagnetic we can conclude the characteristics See, if it is diamagnetic, it has to be like this. Otherwise, it is paramagnetic. And if it is paramagnetic, it will go to sp3 hybridization. And it turned tetrahedral. It is against the facts. Nickel tetracyanide is square planar complex. It is diamagnetic complex. And is well beautifully explained by BB theory. According to the context, you see dsp2, dsp2 hybridization. There are four orbitals and each cyanide donate a pair of electron towards nickel and it's framing like cyanide number one, cyanide number two, cyanide number three, cyanide number four. All the electrons are paired and it turned diamagnetic in nature, diamagnetic in nature. And it is a low spin complex. It is a low spin complex or spin paired complex. 
the hybridization is dsp2 hybridization naturally it is square planar in shape square planar in shape so these kind of characteristics so whichever molecule you take of course we must have the experimental knowledge of what is the kind of magnetic behavior it is giving or at least we must know how the geometry is or what kind of then only we can we can make the conclusions otherwise the conclusions may go slightly vary so this type of characterization and explanation is given by vb theory regarding complex molecules i hope it is pretty clear it's more clear only by practicing more and more examples right now switching on to the next theory it is called crystal field theory crystal field theory crystal field theory tft crystal field theory in this theory actually <coughs> it is it is picturizing some ionic nature of central metal atom and the ligands the central metal atom and the ligand is assumed to be like uh, uh, ions like uh, negative and positive centers central metal atom considered as a positive center and the surrounding ligands are considered as a negative center so it is basically giving a ionic picture to the uh, system the complex molecule containing central atom considered as a positive sphere and the surrounding ligands considered as a negative sphere in this theory crystal field theory right let us try to understand how crystal field theory explain its nature in octahedral complex octahedral complex first all of you know how the octahedral system is if you take a central metal atom octahedral means ml6 system if m is the central metal atom right there are six ligands six ligands the two ligands are coming through the x axis let this be x axis one ligand is coming through this direction and one ligand is coming through this direction so this is ligand 1 ligand 2 one ligand from left one ligand from right one ligand from left one ligand from right through the x axis okay now one ligand come from top and one ligand come from bottom and let that be through the y axis so x axis left and right one ligand each as you try to pictureize and through y axis top and bottom the two ligands are coming and through z axis the two ligands are coming one from front and one from back through the z axis so through the xyz axis the ligands are coming left right top bottom front back like that and now it turned octahedral complex understand basically the uh, theory pictureizes central atom as a positive sphere and the ligands as a negative sphere and how the ligands are approaching the central atom that's very important how the ligands are approaching the central atom uh, through the axis through the axis now see what is the scenario the central atom having the d orbitals 5 d orbitals which are degenerate orbitals this is the d orbitals of the central atom which are degenerate orbitals what is meant by degenerate orbital uh, having the same energy all 5 d orbitals have a same energy okay now this is the energy axis and 5 d orbitals of central atom having such an energy as the ligand start approaching the central atom there is a excitation and the 5 d orbitals are excited to a higher energy level like this their energy increases and as the ligands come close and approach for a bonding these 5 d orbitals are splitting to two group they are splitting to two group three orbitals at the bottom called t2g orbitals and two orbitals at the top 
called uh, eg orbitals t2g orbitals and uh, eg orbitals with reference to a bary center this is a bary center that is average point <clears throat> and there is the splitting the 5d orbitals having same energy which are degenerate in nature split into two energy segment one energy drops and the one energy increases this is t2g orbital t2g orbitals are three orbitals nothing but dxy dxz dyz orbitals these are t2g orbitals whose energy drop from a bary center by minus 2 by 5 delta o and this splitting is called delta o octahedral splitting energy delta o is called octahedral splitting energy octahedral splitting energy delta o right <clears throat> And they drop from the average Barry center minus 2 by 5. Minus means dropping. Minus 2 by 5 delta O. Where here there is an increase in energy by plus 3 by 5 delta O. What is delta O? Delta O. Crystal field splitting energy. How it is splitting? The 3 D orbitals. DXY, DYZ, DXZ. I am sure all of you know what is the nature of dxy, dyz, dxz orbitals. dxy orbital is like this. Their lobes are bisecting the axis. All the three orbitals are like this. Their lobes are bisecting the axis. dxy, dyz, dxz. And now what is the eg orbital? The other two. Okay. d x square minus y square and d is a d square d x square minus y square and d z square what is the importance of those two orbitals compared to these three these three orbitals their lobes are bisecting the axis those two orbitals their lobes are through the axis for example d x square minus y square all of you remember the lobes are like this their lobes are through the axis. Now the ligands are coming through the axis. So when the negatively charactered ligands coming through the axis, the orbitals through the axis experiencing a repulsion and their energy is shifted up and they go up. The way it is going up, Compensatingly, the other three orbitals whose slopes are not through the axis, bisecting the axis, drop down. And when you take the average, it should come in this line. So, what is the character of the, their dropping and increasing? Dropping energy will be minus 2 by 5. Increasing energy will be plus 3 by 5. So, that average comes on this Barry center. And that splitting is called octahedral splitting octahedral splitting okay and now what is the nature of this splitting this splitting nature depends on many factors the splitting of d orbital depends on many factors i mean how much they split what is the energy delta o what is the value of delta o delta o depends on many factors one major factor is nature of the ligand one major factor is nature of the ligand based on which we have a we have a series of ligands it is called it is so called a spectrochemical series that is experimentally determined strength of the ligands and that in fact is a major important point Concerned to crystal field theory. Crystal field theory is putting forward as an order of strength of the ligand. And it is so called a spectrochemical series. You are supposed to by heart the series. This is the spectrochemical series. 
this series you need to in fact i would say by heart it is an experimental order it is an experimental order with the reference to the experimental evaluation we are able to understand co is a powerful ligand and the order comes co cn en en means ethylene diamine ammonia edta you see i i so ncs ncs is powerful while scn is a weak field ligand this type of comparison experimentally given by crystal field theory and this is the order called a spectrochemical series spectrochemical series order of arrangement of ligands according to their strength this is a strong ligand these are all strong ligands as you come to this side this is a weak ligand i minus is a weak ligand br minus is a weak ligand SCN minus, Cl minus, S2 minus, fluoride. You see, fluoride is a weak ligand while ammonia is a strong ligand. Few minutes back, we were commenting or we were going through ammonium complex and fluoride complex. Hexa amine cobalt complex, hexa fluorido cobalt complex. And the major difference was hexaamine found to be low spin complex diamagnetic the electrons were forced to pair up it is because of the strength of the ligand and the other one hexafluorido cobalt that is a high spin complex the electrons are free to maintain their unpaired condition because it is a weak field ligand and that can be well demonstrated in crystal field theory how it can be demonstrated? Let us experiment. Cobalt, hexaamine cobalt, hexafluorido cobalt in the ground of crystal field theory. Let me repeat. This is a strong ligand. This is a weak ligand. What will be the difference? It is influencing over this delta O. Delta O in case of a strong ligand will be larger. And delta O for a weak ligand will be lower. That will be the difference. Let us experiment. Let us try to evaluate. Let us try to understand how the two complexes are explained. CO NH3 6 times 3 plus with a strong field ligand and CO F6 3 minus with a weak field ligand. In both the cases, we have cobalt 3 plus, which is a D6 system. Here also we have cobalt 3 plus, which is a D6 system. And what is going to be the difference? Here it is a strong ligand. So what is going to be? The 5D orbital will split to greater extent. This is T2G orbital and this is EG orbital. And you see delta O is a larger value because of ammonia. While it comes to this complex, the picture will be slightly different. It is going to be like this. This is T2G orbital and this is EG orbital and this is delta O. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in the two complexes. How, uh, how I was able to uh, mention like this? Just now we have gone through electro uh, spectrochemical series, not electrochemical series, spectrochemical series. According to the spectrochemical series, I got a picture, ammonia is a strong ligand, fluoride is a weak ligand. So when it is ammonia coming, there is a larger splitting. And when fluoride is coming, it is a lower splitting. Now, how it is explaining the magnetic behaviors let us experience here we have d6 system so it is d1 d2 d3 three electrons given here fourth electron try to go to top but it is unable to due to large splitting and greater energy fourth electron unable to go there rather it is interested to paired here Fourth electron getting paired here. 
fifth electron getting paired here sixth electron getting paired here why because delta o is greater than pairing energy pairing energy is low compared to delta o so the pairing takes place so how comes the electronic configuration six electrons t2g in t2g one electron two electron three electron fourth electron actually should go to this side so one two three four but it doesn't happen why because of large energy difference so what happens d1 d2 d3 uh, d4 pairs here there is a forced pairing d4 d5 d6 now i think you can easily understand what will be happening there that is also d6 system what will be happening uh, it is d1 d2 d3 since the splitting is small compared comparatively the fourth electron can migrate to this side fourth electron will be over here then fifth electron only the sixth electron can make a pair so how is the electronic configuration d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d6 only sixth electron pairing occurs here fourth electron pairing occurs and hence T2G will carry 6 electron, EG will carry 0 electron. Here what happens? T2G contain 4 electron, EG contain 2 electron. Here no unpaired electron, diamagnetic. There it is, 4 unpaired electron, paramagnetic. That is a high spin complex. This is a low spin complex. This is a spin paired complex. That is a spin free complex. I hope it is clear. So the results are almost same coming in both VB theory and crystal field theory. But the characteristic differences and the way the story is explained is different as it is two different theories. Hope you understand. In fact, uh, the advantage lies in crystal field theory is nothing but it is able to explain the coloring characters, which is an important property of complex molecules. Complex molecules are well known for their performance of colors. So how the colors are explained? It is by DD transition. How DD transition? An electron from here jumping to this side, absorbing a wavelength radiations from the white light and it turned color. So color, how the color is generated in complex molecules is well explained by crystal field theory. I hope it is okay. Now even though not in the syllabus content for many exams, they are asking you to calculate how to work out crystal field stabilization energy in for, for many exams. For many exams, there are questions coming. How to find the crystal field stabilization energy? Calculate CFSE. Calculate CFSE for a D6 octahedral low spin complex. I am just commenting a question. What is the CFSE for? CFSE means crystal field splitting energy. What is the CFSE for? Uh, a D6 octahedral D6 octahedral low spin complex we can calculate how to calculate you see it's very simple this is minus 2 by 5 delta o already commented and this is plus 3 by 5 delta o right you see how it is being calculated minus 2 by 5 delta o into 6 plus 3 by 5 delta O, there is no electron, 0, plus 3P. So, the final result is minus 12 by 5 delta O plus 3P. This is the crystal field stabilization energy for a D6 octahedral complex which is low spin complex. How it is calculated? Minus 2 by 5 into number of electrons here. Minus 12 by 5 delta O plus 3 by 5 into number of electrons here 0. So that is gone. Plus 3P. What is this 3P? 
P means pairing energy. Forced pairing. If there is a forced pairing occurs, that you take an account. That is P. You see, there are three forced pairing system. So, it will be 3P. Like that. Hope it is clear. Minus 2 by 5 into 6. Plus 3 by 5 into 0. Plus forced pairing. Why it is called a forced pairing? D1, D2, D3, D4 should go here. But unable to go because of large energy delta O. It is forced to pair here. I hope it is perfect. How to calculate over here? I think you can have a try. I need not explain. Okay, I will explain. You see that? Very simple. Once again, it is minus 2 by 5 delta O plus 3 by 5 delta O. And what will be the characteristics? Minus 2 by 5 delta O into 4 electron. And here, here it is plus 3 by 5 delta O into 2 electron. So, it will be minus 8 by 5 and here it is plus 6 by 5. How much it is coming? Minus 2 by 5 delta O. This is the answer. I repeat, minus 2 by 5 into 4, minus 8 by 5, plus 3 by 5 into 2, plus 6 by, plus 6 by 5, minus 8 by 5, plus 6 by 5, minus 2 by 5 delta O. Please don't consider this pairing as it is not a forced pairing. It is natural pairing. You see that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 the electron has to be paired anyway. That is need not to be counted. Like this, you can calculate crystal field stabilization energy calculation, which is not a part of our syllabus content, but quite frequently questions are coming from that you need to practice this is octahedral complex explanation crystal field theory you need to know how the tetrahedral complex is explained on crystal field theory that also you must know tetrahedral complexes have a look at the octahedral complex this is octahedral complex. Let me, let me repeat. This is the positive center metal atom and which is approached by the ligands left, right, top, bottom, front, back through the, through the axis. Now, how comes tetrahedral complex? That is quite interesting and that shows a slight difference in the configuration. M, L, 4. Tetrahedral complex. Only octahedral, tetrahedral we need to learn. Only octahedral, tetrahedral we need to learn from the chapter. You see, this is the central metal atom which is surrounded by the ligands. One from left, one from right in the octahedral complex. And this is x-axis. One from top one from bottom through the y axis and one from front and one from back through the z axis. This is how it comes in octahedral system. How comes in tetrahedral? Tetrahedral is dangling character. Dangling character. One ligand comes from this side. One ligand comes from this side. One ligand comes from this side. And one ligand comes from this side. It is dangling in nature. And you can very well understand. A dangling character. This is the axis. And the ligands are coming bisecting the axis. Earlier ligands were coming through the axis. Now the ligands are coming bisecting the axis. Earlier the d orbitals through the axis got repelled. Now the d orbital bisecting the axis will get repelled. And now what is the scenario? What is the scenario? This is energy and we have the five degenerating orbitals and they get lifted up as the ligand approaches and as the ligands come close, they are splitting like this. The three d orbital goes to top and the two d orbital comes to bottom. The e g orbital comes to bottom and T2G orbital comes to top. 
that means dxy dyz dx z orbital repels and their energy increases by plus 2 by 5 delta t what is delta t this is called a delta t crystal field splitting of tetrahedral complexes and the dxy dyz dx z orbitals are repelled and their energy shifted up why they are repelled common logic now the ligands are coming through bisecting the axis the ligands are coming bisecting the axis ligands are negatively charged okay and uh, our orbitals dxy dyz dx z their lobes are bisecting the axis and they experience a repulsion and their energy shifted up consequently the d orbitals which are the lobes through the axis the energy will be dropped down and their energy dropped down by minus 3 by 5 delta t is it clear just opposite and earlier we were using t2g orbital here we use t2 orbitals this t2g t2 these are all spectrochemical terms in octahedral complexes we make use of the term t2g in tetrahedral complexes it is not a geroid orbital we use the term t2 orbital it is geroid non geroid we can discuss somewhere in other classes earlier we were using eg orbital now here we are using e orbital so t2g t2 e eg these are all spectrochemical terms which are characterizing the corresponding d orbitals this is dxy dyz dx z and this is d x square minus y square d z square orbitals earlier we were using delta o here we are using delta t earlier t2g down eg top now t2 top e down i hope the difference is pretty clear and one very important point to be understood for identical complex you take a same metal same type ligand identical complex one is tetrahedral one is octahedral just imagine ml4 ml6 identical complex if you take you can understand delta o or rather delta t equal to 4 by 9 times delta o a very important point tetrahedral splitting is 4 by 9 times octahedral splitting so which is larger tetrahedral splitting energy is somewhat 50% of octahedral low value so tetrahedral splitting energy is normally low value and that is why not quite surprisingly tetrahedral complexes are usually high spin complex usually their energy energy splitting is comparatively low so delta t is somewhat 50% compared to delta o what could be the reason you think and find out very simple common logic very simple common logic if you take identical complexes one tetrahedral one octahedral tetrahedral splitting energy delta t found to be very low comparatively that of delta o what is the reason you please try to uh, find out very simple point i think many of you know if you don't know think and find out think and find out very simple logic and that's about that's about crystal field theory crystal field theory octahedral splitting tetrahedral splitting and these are the two cases we need to learn in the syllabus of course there are concerned explanation for square planar complexes and all so two important theories we have gone through vb theory and crystal field theory and as i said 
Crystal field theory is giving a clear picture regarding the coloring nature of complexes. You see, according to crystal field theory in octahedral complex, T2G down EG top, an electron from T2G ground state can go to EG by absorbing radiations from white light. And the complementary radiation emitted will be the respective color. So, coloring pattern, which is the most important uh, interesting characteristics of complex molecules can be well explained by crystal field theory, which probably not explained by valence bond theory. Each theory has got its own limitation and uh, advantages, right? You see here the change in color, hexa, aqua, nickel, you see that? Hexa aqua nickel, which is green, change pale blue when two water molecules replaced by En. What is the reason? When water molecule go and En comes, there is a change in the splitting energy. This is not fixed, it will change. So when water goes and En comes, there will be change in the delta value. When there is a change in the delta value, there is a change in the wavelength absorbed. There is a change in the color observed. So, color will change. Color will change according to there is a change in the, uh, particularly when there is a change in the ligand. So, six water molecule, two water molecule out, one en in, color changed. Again, two water molecule out, one more en in, color again changed. And all water molecule replaced by en, color changed. So, change in color of the complex can be well understood or explained by crystal field theory. Okay. Now, one of the important talk on metal carbonates. One important talk on metal carbonates. Metal carbonates. Metal carbonyls means these are various metal carbonyls. Nickel tetracarbonyl tetrahedral system. Nickel tetracarbonyl tetrahedral system. Iron pentacarbonyl trigonal bipyramidal system. I am sure all of you know in all metal carbonyls, metal will maintain zero oxidation state. Oxidation number will be zero. In all metal carbonates, metal maintain zero oxidation state. That is a general factor all of you know. This is octahedral complex, hexacarbonyl chromium. This is decacarbonyl dimanganese, decacarbonyl dimanganese. This in fact is two pyramidal characters connected. This is one pyramid. This is one pyramid and this is another pyramid. So the two pyramid joint, two pyramid joint, that is the characteristics of a decacarbonyl dimanganese. While here you have a bridging character, carbon monoxide makes a bridge between the two cobalt, octacarbonyl dicobalt. These are the structural details of various metal carbonates. At the same time, one important point to discuss in metal carbonyls is the synergic effect. All of you may be aware of metal carbonyls maintaining a synergic effect. There is a back bonding. There is a back bonding. If you are taking metal carbonyls, MCOX times, this is metal and this is carbon monoxide. There is a lone pair of electron with the carbon which makes a bonding with the hybrid orbital of metal. This is hybrid orbital of metal and this is bonding molecular orbital of carbon monoxide and that makes a sigma bond. Electrons are donated by carbon. That makes a sigma bond. This is hybrid orbital of metal.
and this is bonding molecular orbital of metal bonding molecular orbital of metal and that makes a sigma bond the usual bond that we are talking about the usual bond that we are talking about sigma bond now apart from this sigma bond there is another bonding what is that bonding it's nothing but the metal is having fully filled d orbitals the metal is having fully filled d orbitals meanwhile there is almost equivalent energy vacant anti bonding orbitals in carbonyl there is vacant anti bonding orbitals in carbonyl i mean carbon monoxide and they make a back bonding there is a back bonding the electrons from here flow towards the vacant orbitals vacant anti bonding orbitals of carbon monoxide and that makes a pi bonding it is a pi back bonding it is called a back donation back donation towards the vacant anti bonding molecular orbitals of carbon monoxide so the electrons from the d orbitals of metal you know usually metals are usually metals here in a in a very complex molecule ligands act as lewis bases ligands act as lewis bases and the metal act as lewis acids all of you know so usually there is a dative bond from the ligand to metal usually ligands donate electrons right and uh, here of course there is a bonding sigma bond the electrons are donated by the carbon monoxide and that makes a sigma bond apart from that there is a synergic bonding synergic bonding formed by the the electrons present in d orbital of the metal is overlapping with the vacant anti bonding orbital of carbon monoxide and that is a pi back bonding pi donation back donation it's not quite surprisingly the carbon monoxide type ligands we call it as pi acceptor ligands they are called pi acceptor ligands okay there is a back bonding quite naturally with increase in back bonding the strength between metal carbon bondage is made more stronger greater the back bonding greater the strength of metal carbon bonding hope you understand but at the same time greater the back bonding carbon oxygen bond weakens so when the back bonding strength increases the strength over here increases here it decreases so greater the back bonding greater the strength of metal carbon and carbon bond while carbon oxygen bond weakens carbon oxygen bond weakens as the electrons are migrating to anti bonding molecular orbital you know what is happening when the electrons are entering anti bonding orbital it's a destabilizing orbital so it will actually destabilize co system bond strength will decrease bond order will decrease bond length will increase so with the back bonding oxygen slightly moves away that in fact is a question giving different examples you can try you can try if it is given mcox times mcox times minus mcox times plus mcox times 2 plus you can try you can try with the four choices where carbon oxygen bond will be bond length will be greater in which of the following four choices carbon oxygen bond length will be greater you can try you can try with reference to what i said now this is an important area regarding the synergic effect observed in metal carbonyls probably this is the, this is the major point of conclusion in that chapter ultimately in the end portion of the chapter tail end story is only applications 
the tale and story of the chapter is only applications regarding various examples quoted the applications involving edta dmg dmg is an important uh, complexing ligand all of you should know dimethyl trioxime alpha nitroso beta naphthol very popular complexing agents are commented in the applications Hardness estimation using EDTA commented there. Gold plating. How the complex involvement is there. Purification of nickel. Metallurgical operations. How the complex is involved. <coughs> the importance already we have discussed in the preliminary starting segment of the chapter. Cyanocobalamin, vitamin B12, cyanocobalamin, cobalt complex, hemoglobin, iron complex, chlorophyll, magnesium. These things we have discussed as an introduction in the chapter content starting. A very important point about Wilkinson's catalyst. You see that Wilkinson's catalyst. That's a complex molecule which you must give importance. Wilkinson's catalyst. Tris triphenyl phosphine rhodium chloride. Tris triphenyl phosphine rhodium chloride. Wilkinson's catalyst. Used for hydrogenation of alkenes. The complexes of silver and gold. The complex involved in photography, traditional photography, is not a part of current day life. We are in the digital era. It is traditional photography involving silver thiosulfate complex and you can expect a question concerned to d pencilamine dis desferioxin b d pencilamine desferioxin b for the removal of excess copper and iron from the by the chelating ligands in animal plant systems the importance of cisplatin commented various area used as a chemo uh, treatment chemical cisplatin so this this in fact is one of the important chapter in the entire 11th 12th standard chemistry coordination compounds let me remind you the various segments we discussed in the chapter initially introduction arrhenius uh, sorry uh, not arrhenius uh, werner's coordination theory and experiments very very important Werner's coordination theory and experiments one of the sure shot questions are based on his experiments number one number two various terminologies concerned to complex molecules then naming nomenclature then isomerism structural stereo isomerism optical isomerism geometrical isomerism facial meridional isomerism and then a few theory Balance bond theory, crystal field theory, finally metal carbonyls. This is one of the most important chapter from which you can expect uh, two questions, the maximum three questions for uh, normally uh, an exam. Two questions generally we are getting from this chapter. Okay, that's about coordination chemistry. With another chapter, another topic, we will meet in the next class. Okay, bye. See you. Take care.